In this three-part video series, we'll take a close look at the major factors that disrupt and damage microbial soil life. Healthy living soils support healthy productive plants, but microbial soil communities are paying a high price for our modern way of life. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Let's get started with part one. Today the level of toxic compounds in almost all soils on planet Earth is growing. Every year, industry invents at least 2,000 new chemicals and compounds, and ultimately all of these are released into our ecosystem. Many will persist, accumulate, react and combine with other molecules and compounds previously made, resulting in completely unknown outcomes for our ecosystem. The typical first casualties of the bioaccumulation of toxins are the communities of soil microbes that support all soil life. Whenever possible, we need to find ways to use fewer synthetics in our lives. The second major human activity that degrades the viability of soil life is very close to home, construction and cultivation. The way we construct our urban communities is always going to damage soil life. This can't be avoided. It's literally chapter one of the building code. Roads and buildings cannot be built on soils containing any significant levels of organic matter. As such, the top layers of soil on any site must be stripped down to the subsoil before construction can even get underway. So, a typical suburban development begins with the arrival of the heavy equipment that strips the topsoil from the land. This soil is then piled and compacted into berms and left to desiccate for several years while the construction and road building is completed. Only then will this damaged and lifeless soil be spread and graded into thin layers in the front and backyards of the new homes. Given what the soil in a suburban development has been through, it's no wonder that plant roots struggle to take hold. In a similar way, the topsoil of industrialized farmland is also in steep decline. Cultivation, tilling and plowing is just as damaging to the communities of microbes in the soil as construction. Simply put, soil life is damaged whenever soils are disturbed. On the other hand, here we see just how many kinds of organisms are thriving and codependent in a typical healthy soil profile. Literally billions of creatures from microscopic bacteria and fungi to those easily seen with the naked eye, like earthworms. Healthy soils are teeming with life and that's what plants need. We know this because plants directly support the microbes at the bottom of this pyramid of life. They form a symbiotic partnership with specialized fungal and bacterial communities. And when the microbial bottom of this pyramid is thriving, the rest of the creatures seen here flourish. Build it and they will come. So, toxins, construction, cultivation, any soil disturbance really, all these activities disrupt soil life and the ability of plants to perform at their best. But before we get into the next factor that damages soil life, I'd like to interject a hopeful note. Nature has evolved well-established processes that help soils to recover from damage. After all, there are all kinds of natural events that damage soils too. Earthquakes, mudslides, volcanic eruptions, floods, etc. And nature knows how to restore soils after things go sideways. We describe this process of habitat recovery as plant succession. Nature wants all ecosystems to operate at their full capacity. And in our part of the Northern Hemisphere, that climax state is a forest. Just like the one seen here at Wolf Lake. This is what nature wants to build, and she knows how to go about it. <laughs> 